For those of you that watched this case end in a mistrial after the jury had deliberated for days, after nine weeks of testimony, 75 witnesses, and all the rest of it, this case ended in a mistrial. The jury said that they were unable to decide, and they came in on their third note. They had been given the uh, stronger instruction that said, remember, try to come together. No one is better qualified than you to come to a verdict. So try your best. Go back and do it again. The jury had a very thorough note that said no amount of further deliberation will break the deeply held convictions we have in the real and held disagreements that were uh, existing with the jury. So the court said, I'm not going to make you do that. I'm declaring a mistrial. Bye. And everybody was like, okay. So the court did not ask anyone anything. Oftentimes, the court will ask the jury for person, where are you split? Are you divided on count one? What is the vote split? Are you divided on count two? What is the vote split? Are you divided on count three? What is the vote split? That did not happen in this case. None of the attorneys asked for it. But then, days after the mistrial, and again, as they left court that day, they scheduled this hearing. There were no objections put on the record. There were no issues put on the record. It was very much a, okay, here's the next scheduling date. And that's what they did. They set a scheduling date for today. After that, the defense filed a motion asking for a dismissal on count one and three, stating that the jurors had, in fact, come to verdicts. So they are back in their courtroom um, that they weren't in for trial. The jurors that came forward, three came forward directly to Alan Jackson. Two, it was heard it by a game of telephone. The defense says counts one and three need to get dismissed. The Commonwealth said, no way. We're retrying this on everything. We're going to hear the Commonwealth today say that they are retrying this case. And there is a new member of the defense team that is not a replacement for AJ, but he was appearing via Zoom today. We'll see if we see him on it. All right, so the case is scheduled today for trial assignment, and what I'd like to do is to get three dates. Uh, I'm aware that a motion to dismiss has been filed. I'd like to get a quick date on that, and I'm glad you're here, Mr. Weinberg, because I'd like it to be with your schedule. Then we so... Mr. Weinberg did file some of the stuff in the new motion. So the court said, particularly, I'd like, I'm glad you're here. I want to make sure it fits into your schedule for oral argument for the new motion. We need a trial date and we need a final trial conference. So I was thinking on the motion to dismiss, can we do it a week from Friday? It would be for oral argument only. From the, from the defendant's perspective, yes, you're right. All right, I think that's August 2nd. I'm going to be out of state. Um, I, I return on August 3rd. Okay, August 9th. Are what you available? 2 o'clock. Are you available, Mr. Weinberg, on I August 9th? Am. Mr. Lally, is the Commonwealth available on August 9th? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right, so that's for oral argument only. Okay. August 9th for our argument on the motion. All right. So given the schedule, and I assume whatever I end up doing on the motion to dismiss will be appealed um, in an effort to make sure we have plenty of time, I would like to schedule the jury trial on January 27th. Is the Commonwealth available? That's fine, Your Honor. Lally's like, yep, yeah, whatever. Okay, so January 27th for trial. And let's do the final trial conference the week of the 13th or even the week of the 6th. Yes, there is a new defense attorney for Karen Reed for this motion. He didn't replace anybody. He was added to the team for the motion. It's not the 9th or the 16th, but all the days are... Your Honor, the only uh, caveat, uh, I, I don't have anything on the 27th, I'm clear for that day, but for the fact that I have a Superior Court trial scheduled to begin in Essex County on January 13th. Um, there are multiple... How, how long do you expect it to take? Uh, that's what I was getting to. I, th that could take longer than two weeks. Um, I, I'm happy to 
have this case take priority over that, but that's No, what we'll hold it for you day to day if need be, and I can contact the Essex Superior Court judge once you know who he or she is. Yeah, that's that's not ideal. Um, you know, in terms of preparing for trial, I, I, I can't do a two or three week Superior Court trial and then jump into this case. I can't do that. Okay. So what are you telling me? You just said you're willing to make this a priority, so we'll stick with the 27? That's what he said. Well, okay. Well, why don't we do this? Let's put it on for the 27th. Let me see if I can make peace in Essex County. And then on the next date when we come back for oral argument, if I can readdress the court on that issue. Okay. I'm happy to talk to Judge McCarthy, who's the garage up there about this. It's uh, my... Yeah, okay. That's great. Um, all right. So let's set it for the 27th. And... Why don't we do the 14th for final trial conference? Uh, the 14th at 9 or 2? Two? 2. 2. If it turns out that we have, you know, in excess of 35 or whatever motions and women still at that point, let us know and we will try and get the whole day. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. For everyone just popping in to the scheduling conference, it lasted, what, five minutes? That's very typical for a scheduling conference. The court took the bench and said, these are the dates we need to set. First, we need to set a date on the motion to dismiss. I have the motion. We are setting a date for oral argument, meaning that the date is set for the attorneys to come in and argue their motion to explain anything that the court once explained and to argue beyond what's just in their filings. That date has been set for August 9th, 2024. We will be back in court together on that date. The court also set a trial date for Karen Reed on January 27th, 2025 to start that trial. A final trial conference setting on January 14th, and the court said, and if we have a ton of motions, we will set that for the entire day. So the court did say, I anticipate whatever I do on the motion to dismiss, there will probably be an appeal. So the court is giving enough time for that process to happen because the court is saying, whatever I do, someone's going to want to appeal it. So why don't we just set the trial date out far enough to accommodate that potential for appeal. And that's really it. So we have future dates set in the Karen Reed case. This is typical of most court dates. So when you go to court on scheduling conferences, oftentimes on cases that are not homicides, you can do those by teleconference. You can, you can do those by not appearing in court. In criminal court, it's very common that you appear in court. If the court has questions, it's common. And I'm not surprised the attorneys wanted to be face to face with the judge, given the motions that they had, just in case the judge was trying to push out the argument on that motion. And the court didn't do it at all. The court said it was very conscientious of getting that date set very quickly. And so there was nothing for the defense to argue about. Hey, we're going to get this set very quickly. Here's where it's going to get set. So that's what the court has asked to do. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want to stay in the loop with everything I'm doing, receive the fastest notifications out there and get more Law Nerd community, join me at lawnerdapp.com, our free app for iOS and Android.